Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. This is Mani Karthik here. In this episode, we're going to take a look into Google Web Stories. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. This is Mani Karthik here. In this episode, we're going to take a look into what are Google Web Stories and how we can make use of Google Web Stories to get a lot of traffic. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't even know if it'll work, but Google Web Stories is the brand new thing from Google and everybody has stories. Instagram, Fleet, from Twitter. So, so I don't even know if this will actually help you for bloggers or otherwise, but it's a shiny new thing. So everyone's trying it out. So let's go ahead and try it out as well and see what it is. Everyone who tries out new stuff for the first time does have some kind of advantage. So let's see if we can get it. You probably know about what stories are all about because everyone's got stories, you know, Facebook, Instagram, even Twitter for that matter, fleets, I believe it's called. So apparently, since all of us have the attention span of a goldfish, the thing is that everyone's moving towards this snackable, smaller sizes of content. It all started from back in those days when we had like long pieces of content, and then we moved to TLDR type of content, then we moved to listicles, and then we went back to, you know, ultimate guides and stuff like that. So, you know, these formats keeps changing and we're trying to bring about these new formats of content that's more appealing to everyone. So I think stories is one such content. It all started from Instagram. Oh no, wait a minute. It all starts from Snapchat and then Instagram picked it up then course Facebook and then now you know Twitter so Google is the latest entry into the world of stories so to speak so basically it's just the same thing you can make you know 10 second 5 second 2 second kind of automatically changing or expiring kind of content where you have a big picture with whatever you know text whatever content you want to put in and then that would lead to another big piece of content or it doesn't have to lead all the time it can just be a story so that's what google stories are at this moment at least from what i know so it's basically just stories but it's on google so i haven't seen it in action on the serps as in when i search for something i haven't seen google stories show up anytime on the search results pages but i'm hoping hey it's from google so you know, they can do whatever they want. So if at some point of time, Google decides that, okay, we're gonna give more importance to Google web stories, then you don't wanna lose out and say, oh, I should have done this, you know, one year back. So which is why we're doing this exercise and we hope that this actually works. So it's pretty simple. What you do is come to this particular page. Um, you would get to it if you search for Google web stories. And the first result is this developer.google.com page where it has all the information about what it is. So it looks and feels exactly the same as, you know, Instagram stories. It's just that you can embed these stories into blog articles or websites. So that's the beautiful part. So maybe at some point of time, I'm thinking that if Google sees more and more people adopting this kind of content and, you know, let's say, for example, Washington Post or NY Times starts publishing this kind of content, then maybe it'll show up on search results pages at some point of time. And that's when everyone's going to go berserk and like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this kind of thing. But let's uh, let's do this today and see what it's all about. So. Uh, the fun thing is that if you're a WordPress blogger, there is a WordPress plugin from Google that lets you create these stories right from your dashboard and then, you know, export it to the front end. So let's uh, go ahead and see what it is. So let's download Google Web Story Beta plugin. So it's basically on beta. Uh, it's available on GitHub. What you need to do is download the beta from this particular page. I don't think it's still available on the WordPress repository, but it soon will be. So this page basically shows you how it's built, some good templates and some examples and everything. Uh, it doesn't tell you how it's going to help you. Like, is it going to give you more traffic or anything? It's just an experimental thing, I believe. So, you know, why not just go and uh, do this? So I downloaded the zip file. So what you need to do is go into your dashboard on WordPress and of course come to the plugins and click on add new, upload the plugin and drag and drop the zip file, install now, and wait for a second, it's uh, uploading. Okay, there you go. Then you activate the plugin, and I think that's pretty much it. Let's see if there's any settings. So, okay, there we go. This is a test page. This is a test, testing. You need to go to stories and add new. Usually plugins that doesn't have, you know, the settings from their menu usually has it under settings over here or in the tools menu, but uh, it's good. It has a dedicated menu for its own. So, okay, so there you have it. Here's where you can create a new story. So, you know, it's kind of like Photoshop or Canva if you're used to it, where you can, you know, basically drag and drop a lot of elements. So here you can choose 
from your gallery or whatever images you have been uploading to your WordPress page. All that would show up over here. So I'm gonna just randomly pick up something. Let's say this one. So I click on the image and it shows up over here. So there we go. I place it. It's easy, just drag and drop. If you use Canva, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, or Photoshop. Let me drag one more. Nice. It's so satisfying to see this. Uh, okay, perfecto. Now we will add a text. So you can find the text over here. Click on text and you have the presets, heading, subheading and body text. So I'm gonna click on heading, right? So let's double click and edit it. This is a test. Oh no, this is a heading, okay? And then you can resize it, you can pull it to these sides, you can rotate, just like, you know, Canva and any other image editing tool does these days. So you can also change the font. So you come over here towards the right, that's where you see the attributes. And uh, you can choose the font from here. So I'm gonna go for Bitta, which happens to be a favorite of mine. There we go. And then you can choose everything like font size, um, you know, the height, spacing, left line, right line, whatever you want. Padding, you can also add a link to it, like for example, you know, your article or something like that. And uh, that's pretty much it. And you have these indent, left line, right line. It's all pretty much similar to how it is on, you know, Google Docs or Microsoft Word. One thing you have to keep in mind is that you need to have at least uh, five, I believe, five or six uh, pages in a story for it to be considered a story. So don't just create one particular page and call it a day. Uh, what you need to do is go to this particular button and add a new page. You can also duplicate the one you have already. So I'm gonna click on duplicate. So it's easy for me to just change something here. This is page two. Great, so basically, you know, you can keep on adding how much ever pages you want in the story. It's just like every other story, like uh, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, the one thing you need to keep in mind is when you select the page and you come down to the document part of it, uh, here you will see a couple of different things. You can um, add a publish date, you can add your name, um, you can uh, create like a publisher logo, a cover image, uh, both of these are required. So a publisher logo, I would say if you have a, there you go, beautiful. I don't know if the dimensions. And then you can also select a cover image. So that cover image is what shows up like if you share on Facebook and stuff. So click on the edit pencil and choose something from your media library. So I'm gonna go for this. This, perfect. So it'll show basically a preview and everything so you can see how it, and of course you can give a slug, like, you know, basically the permanent link. So whatever is SEO optimal. I don't know if how significant it is at this point of time. So it's just basically, you know, hygiene right now. So it gives something that's memorable. And then, all right, so once you set that up, um, you can also view it in grid view. Once you're ready, all you need to do is click on publish. But before clicking publish, what you do is you hit the preview button. There we go. So you hit the preview button and it should show you how it looks. So there you go. You see this thing, right? Uh, this is what happens in stories on Instagram and Facebook. So exactly the same. Now, the fun thing is that this is shareable. So if you click on the share button over here, you can get the link. So that link is copied over here. You can also add it to, let's say, a new post that you're creating. So let's do that. So let's go in and add new post. I have one over here. And then you can click on the block here. And uh, yeah, there you go. Um, web story and it'll show you what story you have so let me just refresh this because this was created before I saved that story oh by the way you need to also publish it so that it's available so click on publish okay there we go embed and let's hit preview and see how it looks perfect okay it's a little bit skewed here I think that's because of my image dimensions but I think it should be okay there we go so it's moving, you can see the thing move over here. This is page two, this is page six. Okay, I think I jumbled up the order, but you know how it is. Great, so at this point of time, we don't really know if 
having Google Web Stories is really good, like for SEO, or this is gonna give you more traffic or anything like that. It's uh, too early to say anything of that sort, but it's a good idea to just perhaps get started with this because you know it's pretty much empty right now. I don't see many people using it. So maybe if you can do some creative stuff with it, not just to you know manipulate or just be the first guy in line or anything like that, but I think there are some creative ways you can use Google Web Stories to maybe you know get more attention from your readers or get your stories embedded on other websites and stuff like that. So maybe it's a link building opportunity. I don't know. It's it's uh, wild, wild west right now. So we're just experimenting. Uh, the fun thing is that it's very easy to you know get started. So you can just create a story in like five minutes or so. So create as many stories as you want and you know embed them in your article. So one way I can see this going is, let's say, for example, you have a beautiful article on, uh, I don't know, something with a lot of stats and everything. So maybe you can create stories with those stats, which is, you know, really snackable kind of information that people like and love. So maybe that'll give you more attention, that'll fetch you more readers or I don't know, even links for that matter. So maybe we can try that way. So let me know if you have any creative uses for Google Web Stories. At the moment, we're all just experimenting and hoping that this catches on. Being the first mover, I hope that you get some sort of advantage. But we won't know that until six months or maybe next year even. Who knows? All right. So that's it for today. This is Mani Karthik signing off.